Stories have been passed on through the ages by written and oral traditions. But before there was radio, TV, and the internet, there was another way to distribute information that had the ability to educate, influence, and entertain. The power of the press. In 1835, the American newspaper industry was booming and faced heavy competition. In an effort to boost circulation, a two-year-old paper called the New York Sun lowered its price to one cent, beginning the era of the penny press and making newspapers affordable to everyone. But the paper would have to turn to more sensational and attention-grabbing stories to meet the demands of their new audience. On August 25th, the first installment of six articles under the headline Great Astronomical Discoveries appeared on the front page of the New York Sun. The series went into lengthy detail, outlining evidence of life on the moon. But there was just one problem. None of it was true. The articles were authored by Sun journalist Richard Locke, who was writing under the alias of Dr. Andrew Grant. He cited the Edinburgh Journal of Science as the source of the story, crediting Sir John Herschel a respected and well-known astronomer for these great discoveries. The story claimed that Herschel had made some amazing scientific discoveries on the moon by means of an immense telescope. Massive telescope had the ability to view in great clarity even the smallest forms of life due to its second lens, the hydro-oxygen microscope, which allowed for further magnification. Unicorns, two-legged beavers, and bat-like winged men roamed the lunar surface, which was covered in forests, beaches, and even sapphire temples. After the story was printed, the paper circulation rose to nearly 20,000, the largest in the world. But not everyone caught the fever. Rival editor of the New York Herald, James Bennett, was suspicious. As soon as he started raising questions about the existence of this great telescope, the final installment of the story was published, which claimed that it was destroyed after Herschel left it pointed at the sun. In addition, Bennett uncovered that the article's source, the Edinburgh Journal of Science, had ceased publication two years earlier. Then, Bennett attempted to unveil the true identity of the author, the mysterious Dr. Grant. He used editorials in the Herald that refuted the lunar story and put pressure on Richard Locke to admit penning this felonious forgery. Soon news of the grand discoveries of life on the moon spread to Europe, catching the attention of the then very real and respected Sir John Herschel. At first amused, Herschel soon became annoyed at the false claims made by the paper. He denied his involvement with the New York Sun, as well as the existence of the enormous telescope. After several weeks, the Sun eventually admitted to the hoax, but never issued a retraction. And it was only after Richard Locke had left the paper that he finally laid claim to the Great Moon Hoax. The six articles published by the New York Sun in 1835 successfully grabbed the public's attention. It's remembered as one of the greatest media hoaxes in history that brought about a new age of ethics and journalism Citing sources and fact-checking would become mandatory in news reporting, setting a higher standard of credibility, and separating the line between fact and fiction. 